colored LEDs can add an awesome ambient lighting effect to any room or device. In this video, we'll take a qualitative no math approach to basic LED circuit design, and in the following videos in this playlist, we'll get into the math in more detail. Let's turn the lights back on and take a look at our circuit, which is built on a breadboard. It will really help if you understand how a breadboard works in order to understand this video. So if you have not used a breadboard before, check out our breadboard tutorial, which again is linked in the description of this video. Now, taking a look at our circuit, our basic LED circuit has three main parts. We have a battery, we have the LEDs, and we have parts called resistors, which as the name implies, resist the flow of electrical current. We use these resistors connected to each LED to prevent them from burning out, because otherwise, if we didn't do that, and we connect the LEDs to a battery that has a voltage that is too high or above the voltage rating of the LED, it can cause the LED to burn out or even pop or explode, as we will see in a minute. Choosing the right size or resistance value for this resistor is the key to LED circuit design. If the resistor is too large, then the LED might appear dim or barely light up at all. If the resistor is too small, then the LED might appear very bright, but it can burn out earlier and have a shortened lifespan. Your circuit can also get dangerously hot. If the resistor is way too small, or you forget it completely, then this can happen. Your LED might just flash once and then burn out instantly. They can even explode or pop. Resistors are these little parts with colored bands that represent a color code that indicates their resistance value in ohms, the unit used to measure resistance. Now, learning to read that code and convert it to a resistance value is definitely something you should learn how to do if you want to get into electronics, but it's really a topic for another video. So, for purposes of this video, we're going to assume you have purchased a resistor kit that comes with the values labeled for you. For example, here I can see that a 220 ohm resistor has red, red, brown, and gold bands. You can also buy a case like these at a hardware or craft store for organizing small parts and use labels to label your resistors in different bins so you can keep track of them and not have to hunt around to find the value you need. The simple rule of thumb for circuits with small numbers of common household batteries, so something like a single 9 volt battery or a handful of AA batteries which are 1.5 volts each, is just to start with large resistor values and work your way down until your LED is a reasonable brightness. So here I have a 100 kilo ohm resistor, that's 100,000 ohms, and we see that if I put that in series with the LED on the breadboard, and again if you don't know how to put things in series on a breadboard, you can go check out the breadboard tutorial video, we cover that in more detail there. The LED is on, but very, very dim, so I am going to swap that out and go down to a 1 kilo ohm or 1,000 ohm resistor, and here I see that my LED is on and reasonably bright, so in this case, with this single 9 volt battery, I would probably be okay with a 1 kilo ohm resistor. Now, I don't recommend doing this because the circuit can get hot, and if you're not careful, you could even start a fire, but again, if you continue to swap in smaller and smaller resistors, eventually you will see that the LED starts to get even brighter, but you might notice a burning smell, you might see the circuit smoking slightly, or it might actually get hot to the touch, which again, this is for educational and demonstration purposes only. Don't touch it because I don't want you to burn yourself, but here I have gone all the way down to a 100 ohm resistor, and the LED is really bright, and in this case not burning or smoking, but probably going to burn out the LED earlier than its lifespan would normally be, and this resistor is getting hot to the touch, so I am probably exceeding the safe power rating of the resistor. And that is something we are going to cover in more detail when we get into the math and physics in the next video in this series, which you can find linked in the description of this one. If you do make a mistake and notice that things are starting to get too hot, you want to disconnect the battery immediately to remove power from your circuit, and then wait for things to cool down, and the safest approach is to use tweezers or something to remove the parts again just so you don't burn your fingertips on anything that has gotten hot. After that, you can go back up a value, so in this case I'm going to go back up to my one kilo ohm resistor, but again those resistor kits typically have lots and lots of values in them, so I was making very big jumps there just for demonstration purposes, but you can choose some other intermediate value to fine tune and again get the optimal brightness for your LED that isn't going to be too bright or burn it out early. So that was the very quick no math rule of thumb way to do this. What we are going to do in the subsequent videos in this playlist, which again you can find linked in the description of this one, is say, okay, you have a desired number and color of LEDs and a certain available power supply. 
how do you design the circuit and choose the appropriate resistors such that you're not burning out any of the LEDs or the resistors and even maximizing the efficiency or minimizing the power consumption of your circuit. So if you'd like to try this out for a science or engineering project, again, check out the links in the video description for the next videos in the series and the written instructions on our website. For many other electronics projects and over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.